All right, welcome to the Krug Show. Larry Kruger with you, and we're talking with Howard Eskin, WIP uh, fame in Philly, who we've known for years and years and years. Howard, how are you? I've never had a bad day in my life, and uh, <laughs> Sunday, I think, could be another really good day. Uh, and it could be a good day here in Philadelphia, but maybe not in the Bay Area. <laughs> Well, what do you think? I mean, what do you, what is if the Eagles who look so good? I mean, what's the talk in Philly this week? Obviously, you guys are confident. Um, it, it, is there any concern about Philly on either side of the football in your mind? Uh, well, there's always concern because sure. you still have to play the football game. But you know, the fans are are confident. They figured. Purdy's just a, just another rookie. Now I know he's played well, and you guys are going to pump him up and jack him up. And <laughs> Kyle Sh- Kyle Shanahan's going to make it easy for him, not put him in any really tough situations. Uh, I want to see how he plays coming from behind in a game like this, and uh, that could be the case. He could come from behind, but that you know, people look at oh, they're going to they're going to get to Purdy. It's not that easy. I, I know. Uh, the way Kyle Shanahan runs the offense to get the Purdy, but if they, if the Eagles are plus two, and that's in most teams in turnovers, and I don't think the Eagles will turn the ball over. And if they do, they they don't lose unless they turn the ball over. But I think they can get the Forty ers to turn it over. But the fans, the fans are obviously confident. You know, you get to this point. Uh, you're not going to say, "Oh yeah, I mean, I think they're going to lose." We know that that the 49ers have a good defense. Uh, but I, I know that you guys out there think uh, that your receiving core is as good as Philadelphia's, uh, and that's not the case. It, it really is not the case. And I was talking to Dallas Goddard today. He says, you know, there's people out there think Kittle's just, you know, like it, it makes you look ridiculous, uh, b- ridiculously below his level. Dallas Goddard is close to Kittle. So, uh, so the tight ends, you got it, but Dallas Goddard's really good. Now, the wide receivers, uh, you can run anybody you want out there, and you can talk about the way Debo Samuel plays, but the Eagles wide receivers are really good. And the quarterback has is, is played well. Uh, both quarterbacks are in a situation that they've never been before. So we'll see about that. But the people here are confident. Why wouldn't they be confident? The 49ers are on the road. And the the last, I think the last nine times that um, the NFC championship has been decided, the home team has won seven out of nine. So I'm just going to lay that number on you. (laughs) Um, 49ers are the hotter team. The Eagles, I think, maybe the better team. How, How much credit is Howie Roseman getting for the creation of this roster. I, I look at their D line, especially, and I see nothing but starting caliber players, even, even the backups, every one of those guys could start elsewhere. Well, Hassan Raddick is where he's really getting his props. Uh, that was a great, as it turns out, I think he had what 17 and a half sacks this year. Uh, the Eagles led the league in sacks, but he had 17 and a half of the 70. I think it was, it was 70 during the regular season. So, uh, so, he had a lot of them, and that is a huge, huge signing. Uh, the trade for uh, 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 C.J. Gardner-Johnson was really big. He's helped. He's come back from injury now, and he's fine. Uh, they really have done – they signed Bradbury this year at one of the corner spots. That's really good. So when you look at what he's done, uh, Robert Quinn was – uh, okay, that didn't work, and they gave up a pick to Chicago uh, for Robert Quinn on the defensive line. So that hasn't worked, but not everything is going to work, but he's getting a lot of props. He's getting a lot more juice now uh, than he did years ago because people would always focus on the bad draft picks, and they'll still focus on that once in a while. But he's uh, he's done some really good things, uh, and that has really uh, that has really made this team uh a, a much better team. They're just, they're just a good football team, and that's why they had the best record in the NFC. Yeah. What What do you think of the, the Eagle linebackers, TJ Edwards, Kazir White? What do you, What do you think of that tandem outside of Reddick, who obviously is having a phenomenal year? I miss that signing of Kazir White. He's really played well, and TJ Edwards has taken another step up this year. Now they don't get the the hype that the Forty Nine ers linebackers get. 
But those two players have really done a good job. Because you're right. I don't know how you're going to re-sign all the players that are on the last year of their contracts. And Kazir White is, is a player that I'd like to see come back. He's really done a nice job, really done a nice job. And TJ Edwards has been better than solid. So are they as good as the 49ers linebackers? No, but only if they get pressure from those front four, and once in a while you put a fifth guy on that defensive line, uh, the other guys are in coverage. And they've done a really good job in coverage. And that's where they hope to create turnovers, especially at this point in the season. You get turnovers, you're going to win the game. Has anybody um, stopped the Eagles' run game? I know I know Sanders and Gainwell, Boston, Boston Scott, and Hurts himself. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough group to stop. But has anybody had success stopping the run game this year? I can't remember. Well, obviously the game – and the games that they lost, uh, they probably stopped them. And then the people in Philadelphia whine about them not running the ball enough. But you need to pass, uh, and the philosophy is around the NFL. The 49ers may not use this because they have a, a young quarterback. You need to pass to score. You need to score to win. It, that's kind of an interesting dynamic. And then when you get the lead, and the 49ers, uh, the ones where you dust off those tro- trophies from the, uh, from the 80s when you have to dust them off, uh, those 49ers <laughs> teams would pass a lot to get a lead and then they'd run the ball a good part of the second half and that's where only a 50-50 ratio in a run pass no they had a pass ratio uh, of a lot more to get the lead and then the run uh, you would run to, to run, run down the clock uh, once you did have the lead but the Eagles like most teams and not, uh, it's not uncommon for the Eagles like the pass to score, and then the running game has been pretty good because here's why the running game's good. I mean, I think Miles Sanders has done a, a terrific job, and he's not been injured this year, and the offensive line is really, really, really good. They're really good, and and that really helps. And Lane Johnson, I mean, it was limited practice uh, in his first practice back this week, but Lane Johnson should be fine, and he is so good. Uh, at the right tackle, probably the best right tackle in, in the NFL. And and then at left tackle, Jordan Mailata has done a really nice job. And Kelsey, that's why he's an, he's an all-pro center, is because he is really, really good. So uh, their offensive line obviously helps the run game for the success. But you need to score first, and then you can run the football. If they score, if the Eagles score, 24 points they win this game and that's uh, I, I don't know if they put numbers up on the board to say uh, I know defensively they've not allowed more than 20 points in most games so if they keep the 49ers under 20 the Eagles win the game this is not going to be one of those in those Dallas that that 19 12 that, that that game was a joke you're playing a bad Dallas team a bad Dallas team and you only score 19 points that's ridiculous I mean that's that's embarrassing that's embarrassing. I don't want to hear, well, the, the, the Cowboys defense is really good. No, no, not 19 points good. Please, spare me. <laughs> uh, you You're know, not impressed so, by the Niner offense. Uh, um, yeah, I, they have some really good people. And, you know, there's some games where they, they kind of like the Seattle game. It took a while before they kind of turned on the juice. Uh, and so I, I am impressed at times. Uh, I do think Purdy has done a nice job. But come on, it's just you're going to have to sc- you're going to have to score more than 20 points to have a chance to beat the Eagles. I mean, I think it's that simple. And the Eagles' defense is is really good. But yeah, I, I I'm impressed with some of the players here. They have some good players. I mean, McCaffrey's a really good running back. Debo's done a great job. Whatever he does, does a lot of different things on offense. I understand that, and it makes it easier for Purdy. But Eagles defense is going to, I think, going to create some challenges. Well, some challenges. They're going to create more challenges than Dallas did. Dallas gets all this hype because they're Dallas. And they are absolute stone-cold frauds. They are frauds. You know, I, t- I put up a tweet the other day of a, of a picture. Uh, who has more rings since 1997? J-Lo with six or the Cowboys <laughs> with zero? <laughs> hey, do the Eagles flip-flop their corners? Or do, you know, will DeSlay always stay on the left and, and Bradbury always stays on the right? Yeah, 
I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, a player might go in motion and he might follow them. But for the most part, no, they, they, they keep their corners the way they are. And how about up front? I mean, I, I you know, I know uh, Fletcher Cox is going to go into Canton someday, but uh, Linval Joseph, that was a great pickup. And Hargraves yes. had some amazing games this year. Um, who's Who would you say is the guy that commands the most double teams up front? Well, uh, it used to be Fletcher Cox, but not as much now. Hargrave has done a good job, but you, you, it's hard to double team because they have such good speed on the outside between Hassan Reddick. Hey, Brandon Graham came back from an Achilles injury, and he's got 11 sacks. He had 11 sacks in the regular season. I mean, that's unbelievable uh, at, at 33, 34 years old. He's done a really good job. Uh, there's They have four players with double digit sacks. How many times has that happened? So it's really, it's really hard to double team. You I mean, you can, you can try it, but uh, it, it, I think the 49ers are going to have to, they're going to have to throw the football to score. I think they're going to have to throw the football to score. I don't think there's any question about it. A couple last ones. Who's the Eagles number one receiver in your mind? Is it, is it Devonte or is it AJ Brown? It's AJ Brown because he's bigger and stronger. Devonte Smith seems to, I'm telling you, I can't believe this guy. He gets hit. His legs are toothpicks. He is so small, you know, skinny, skinny, small, but he catches the ball all the time. He runs great patterns, but AJ Brown, he catches it, runs with it. He's big, he's strong. Uh, obviously, uh, he's better in the red zone because he's bigger, but uh, AJ Brown's the better wide receiver, but Devonte Smith has done a really, really, really nice job. And like I said earlier, Dallas Goddard is really a good tight end. So uh, they have, and those would be the three primary uh, players. I think Devonte, Devonte Smith had close to a hundred catches this year and AJ Brown um, I don't know what his number was, but it was high. Uh, if they double AJ Brown, then you go to Devontae Smith, so you, you pick your poison. The Eagles are better than I thought they would would be, not are now, but would be this year. And Jalen Hurts has stepped up tremendously. Uh, the signing of A.J. Brown, uh, trade and signing, uh, they traded for him. I don't know what Tennessee was thinking. I mean, that's it's just stupid by them. By them, but there's always somebody. There's somebody, somebody stupid out there that you can make and you can get a player, make a trade, and make get a player. Uh, with and then they signed him but those two receivers make it hard to double either one of them because then somebody's going to have single coverage and that is not easy two last questions Jalen Hurts um he's gotten so much better uh he had an MVP like year this year what yeah. what's the key to Hurts in your mind has he and also I mean is it, it to me this game's about first and second down if the Eagles get to third and one third and two I think they're almost impossible to beat you got to get them in third and five third and six but what's hurts has been great why has he been where's his improvement come okay his improvement is decision making uh last year he didn't he, he didn't go through all his progressions uh, obviously it was a learning process and get to where he needed to get in a lot of the progressions he's made better decisions quicker decisions uh you can't hesitate that's where Dak Prescott is a fraud he hesitates so many times you can't do that the players are too fast uh, and he's really uh, Jalen Hurts has really done a good job uh with making it's decision making it comes down to decision making and he's really made good decisions he's he really has turned into a very, very good quarterback uh and again I, I didn't know I knew he would take a step forward I didn't know that he would take this much of a step forward and everybody praises him for his hard work and his dedication but you still have to have it in you you still have to have those instincts and he's he's gotten a lot uh, really I mean a really a lot better with those instincts and he knows when he can run with the RPOs and now he's healthy and he's going to be able to run uh, when he needs to um, he throws well on the run he does he really makes good decisions and really sees the field a lot better than he did last year. And that is a big difference. Howard, you're the man. Last one, Nick Sirianni. Uh, you know, obviously he's doing some good, good things, but man, when he starts mugging for the cameras and, and oh, do I mean, come on, man. Nobody's ever done that in the history of the NFL. You know, 
what oh, do you yeah, what do you th- what do you that. think yes, of Sirianni? Yeah. What and what do people uh, say okay. about him? I think he's a. Ter- he didn't know that at the beginning because his first news conference was a train wreck. That's because when when PR people give you all these things, say this, don't say this, say this, and it was on Zoom, and he's looking. You can see him looking at his at his notes. And it was it was ridiculous. And then he became himself. He's got a great personality. He, he explained mug, and he says the camera's right in front of my face. And you know his personality just has him do that. You know you have the the roving camera over the top of the stadium, and it was right in front of him, and he looked at it. So what? It's a it's a it's a two second uh, cutaway <laughs> during a game, and everybody makes a big deal about it. He's got uh, he's high fiving people on the sidelines when they score. He's got a lot of energy, but he gets back into the mode of coaching. And here's something a coach needs to have, and it's hard to have. You need respect from your players. And if they like you as well, that's hard to get both. And everybody on that team both respects him and likes him. You know, Bill Belichick, it was, I think he's an over, he's overrated as a coach because he had Tom Brady. He's a losing coach without Tom Brady. But, but not everybody liked him. Now, they respected him, but they didn't like him. But Nick Sirianni's got uh, both. He's got a great personality. His meetings have energy. He does things with videos and all kinds of things to to make it fun and get your attention. I think he's a very good – and he's very creative. I think he's a very good coach. I I really do think he's a very good coach. Now, you know, people talk here about the coach of the year and he's not in the top three of the finalists. You know, I I think there's no question Kyle Shanahan, although he blew it for the Atlanta Falcons – in that Super Bowl against the uh, against the Patriots, uh, you know, when he got dumb and started to be cute when he got to the 21 yard line near the end of the game, and uh, well, I don't even get in. I feel bad for Matt Ryan. That was his only chance at the Super Bowl, uh, but that was bad. But and Kyle Shanahan is probably the coach of the year because he's done it with down there with third string quarterback. So I'll give him that. But I think Nick Sirianni is right in there. Brian Dable, everybody's getting caught up with Brian Dable. You know what the NY on their helmets stand for? What's that? Next year. <laughs> Next year. That's what the NY on their helmets stand for. Hey, what year so, What year was your first year in Philly on the air? Wow. You know, you can go back to uh, full time. It was 76. 76. Wow. Yeah, and I'm only and I'm only 41 years old. It's amazing. Out. Yeah, you were negative. You were negative years back then. Hey, Howard, <laughs> how, exactly how, right. what's the talk in Philadelphia going to be Monday when Brock Purdy and the Niners roll in and roll out uh, on the way to the Vic, on the way to the Super Bowl? Well, I, I'm going to tell you, we got to close off the bridges. I mean, you <laughs> have a big one out there, but there's multiple bridges here. You got to close them off because it might be dangerous for those people stopping in the middle of the bridge and wanting to do something stupid. Uh, So it will be a disaster area, a flat-out disaster area if, if, not when, if Brock Purdy and the 49ers win that game. It will not be pretty, but it will be great for talk radio. It will not be pretty. 27-24, 49ers, Howard. I'd be shocked if the 49ers <laughs> scored 27 points. Absolutely shocked. Uh, it would be shocking to me. Hey, there's no way. There's no way they scored 27. Give no me your way. final. What, what What's the final going to be in your mind? I think the Eagles are the ones with 27, and the 49ers have 17. If people want to follow you, where where where's the best place to follow you? Well, they can follow me on Twitter at Howard Eskin, one word, just at Howard Eskin, E S K I N, and they can follow me, and they can uh, uh, they can be mad at me like they are here at times in Philadelphia. I don't care. You know, it's so easy. It's easy to beat up certain teams like we beat up the giants, but we beat up the Cowboys first. So I'll beat up them first. Uh, Another year where they lost in the playoffs, they will never win with Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott. Never. And that's spelled N E V E R for the people out on the Bay area that don't know how to misspell that (laughs) word. I just wanted to, I just wanted to do that for them. (laughs) Howard, happy new year. Uh, We wish you nothing but, you know, success and good health uh, in the years ahead. Thanks again for stopping by. Uh, once again, Niners win this game, but uh, you guys had a really good year, and uh, it's a it's a you're a plucky upstart 
and uh and and you know good things are coming for you guys but it ain't your year <laughs>